Hello my beautiful friends. I hope you're all doing incredibly well. First and foremost, I have to show you. Look at my shirt. The only ghost I know is the Holy Ghost. It has got a fun ghosty on it. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I love it so much. I had to get it. I had to. And of course I have been saving to wear it for the first time until I was filming this video. So I'm like extra excited about it and I got it in a big size so it's like super cozy and it's 62 degrees and it's October and I'm thriving and I'm so happy. I also got my cutie mushy mug by Fablewood Goods which I will link below. And you guys, she just launched a Hobbit collection and it is the coolest thing in the whole world. I ordered one of everything and I can't wait to get it. I will, of course, like I said, link that all down below along with my discount code so you guys can snag some stuff. I'm very excited, please go check it out. And I think this one is still available. It's so cute and it's just so fall. So this is a super delicious pumpkin spice latte that I made this morning and I'm so excited about it. <laughs> But anyway, so I don't have that many books to share with you guys. I only have, I think, six, maybe. I obviously, as I've said a billion and a half times, I am such a slow reader. I'll be lucky if I get through half of these this fall. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes, but I'm you never know, you know, aim high. And I also wanted to say thank you so much for all of the love that you guys gave me on my last video with my news about my little duckies. I'm still grieving a little bit. I still cry every once in a while when I think about it, but all of your comments helped so much and I got messages on Instagram and I'm just so incredibly thankful for this community that you guys have created with me on this platform because it just has been so comforting to me and I'm just so so grateful for all of you who commented and liked and messaged and everything it means so much to me and my little duckies are waiting for me in heaven and I can't wait to see them again I'm not gonna cry in this video my goodness but if you hear peeping is because our chickens, the two little baby chicks that I had showed as well, along with our duckies, are right next to me. They are alive and well and thriving. They are so big. Like you saw in my last video, they were this big. We got them little chicken nuggets and now they're like this big. They will probably hop out and run around, which will be great because then I have to probably pick up poop afterwards. But anyway, so I'm just going to hop right in to my TBR. So the first book that I'm going to share with you guys, I actually already finished because I started it and I was like, oh, I'll definitely still be reading it by the time I actually like sit down and film my TBR video, like it'll be fine. And then it ended up being so good that I finished it in like two or three days, which is really fast for me. Really, really enjoyed this book a lot. And that is None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. This was so good, you guys. I loved it. Oh my gosh, calm down, goodness gracious. I think this is my first book by Lisa Jewell and I definitely am gonna be reading more from her because her writing was just chef's kiss. It was so good. This is definitely one of those books that when you're reading it, you look at the clock and you're like, oh wow, three hours have passed and it's just, it's so good. The story is so entertaining like the whole time. It's got major stalker vibes and it's just creepy but it's not scary and the story is like constantly entertaining. The characters are very unique and interesting and I just really really loved it. I think I ended up giving this one Four and a half out of five. Yes, four and a half out of five. This follows our main characters, Alex and Josie. Alex has a podcast where she interviews women about like their life's journey. And it's, she's just like inspired a lot of women with their stories and things like that. And so Alex goes out to dinner for her 45th birthday and that's where she meets Josie who happens to have the same birthday as her and they're turning the same age. And Josie is very infatuated with Alex right away like infatuated, creepy infatuated. And so Josie convinces Alex to let Josie on her podcast for a different story. You know, Josie saying that she has a super interesting life story and she's changing things now and things. Goodness gracious, flying all over the place. Josie's gonna like change her life soon and so Alex agrees and things just get really weird. Josie has a very odd background, a very strange family, and she becomes kind of creepily obsessed and stalkerish of Alex and very much envies her life. Just all of this weird stuff. I don't know, it's just really interesting. It's hard to give more details without giving spoilers, but basically a lot of what Josie shares ultimately ends up leading to murder and crime and just like all of this crazy stuff. So it's a very fun mystery thriller. The only reason why I gave it four and a half out of five instead of five is because I was able to 
guess every twist like right before it happened so it kind of took away the oomph of it like I feel like we got a little too much information it was still really good though and then the other thing that made me drop it just a little bit was also because it's a little bit of an open ending like things are resolved but then there's more information given that makes you question things so I was kind of like oh no I don't want to like second guess that ending I would just I just want to know you know I just want to know overall it was really great I loved it it was a fun fall time creepy mystery thriller highly recommend the next book is actually my current read and I am really really enjoying it so far and that is Autumn by the Sea by Melissa Tagg I am just loving this wholesome, beautiful romance story about found family, and it's based in Maine on the coast in October, so the fall vibes are immaculate. This is about Sydney Rose, who was given up for adoption when she was a baby, and then a PI comes tumbling into her life and says, I think I found your grandmother, who's been searching for you for your whole life, basically. So she takes a leap of faith and goes to Maine to meet her potential grandmother, and in that she also ends up meeting somebody there and there's a little bit of a romance that sparks but there's also like a lot of tragedy that's going on at this home in Maine and a lot of life decisions being made and it's just really heartfelt and fun but I'm excited for where it's going because the end of the synopsis the man's name is Neil by the way the romantic interest he's from Scotland he was adopted when he was 14 so he's got a little bit of a twinge and it's really fun to imagine <laughs> but it says while Neil grapples with the future of the farm Sydney wrestles with a past that's messier than ever together they're pulled into a mystery complete with a centuries-old legend unexpected danger and a love as deep as the wild sea does this sound so fantastic also it's a blueberry farm so that's what that was referencing but it is just so great so far the writing is really fun and there's also a really subtle like faith theme so it talks about like Neil holding on to his faith during this time or like Sydney crying out to God for the first time when she was trying to decide if she could go if you're not Christian so far it's not like pushy it's not like strong references to religion it's very very subtle and really beautiful but I'm really really enjoying it and I can't wait to finish it it's just so fun and I believe that this is also first in a series so I'm really looking forward to finishing this and moving on to the rest of the books you guys are just flapping all over the place aren't you the next book is also another romance and it's called just don't fall by Emma St. Clair I really don't know anything about this. Um, it is a sweet romantic comedy, but look at the fall vibes. Isn't that fabulous? I believe this is a fake dating story. <laughs> Before Logan Barnes was hockey's hottest bad boy, he was my brother's best friend. Best friend. He was my brother's best friend and my first crush. Who? Oh yeah, and the guy who ghosted me and broke my teenage heart. <laughs> Now he's back in town not willingly recovering from an injury and he's stuck playing for our minor league team. Sounds like she is the social media manager for the hockey team's TikTok. She's starting to discover that her crush never really died. She still has feelings for him. And when Logan becomes my accidental fake boyfriend, those old feelings flare hot enough to melt the ice. It sounds like a fake dating scenario turned into real feelings and then trying to navigate that because as it said it's, he's only in town temporarily because of his injury so it sounds really fun I am a huge fan of fake dating like I love the series on Netflix what is it to all the boys I loved before I think that's so fun I don't know why it's just so cute and you know what's gonna happen you know they're gonna get feelings for each other you know it's so predictable but it's still always so much fun and I just love it. I think I'll probably pick this one up after Autumn by the Sea. If you've read this, let me know how you liked it. I'm very much so looking forward to it. And I do believe that this is like a closed door wholesome romance. I will keep you guys in the loop on that. And Autumn by the Sea is as well. The next book is one that I have been looking forward to reading for like two years and I'm so excited I finally get to it. The only reason I haven't read it yet is because my husband wanted to read it first before me and he only reads when he's in the reading mood so it took him over a year <laughs> to finish this book and now he's done and I'm so excited and that is Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. I am so pumped. If you didn't know, this is also a TV show on Netflix and it's called Shadow and Bone which is the other series that Leigh Bardugo wrote so I think Shadow and Bone my goodness, girl, chill out. So I think that the show kind of combines the two series by Lee, so it combines Six of Crows and Shadow and Bone. I really 
can't even tell you the synopsis of this. I'm sure you probably already know this is like one of the most popular books in the bookish world. I'm so looking forward to it. I love Kaz Brecker. He's one of my favorites. I know this is like fantasy steampunk vibes, so kind of like dark and moody, which is totally my vibe and I'm very much so looking forward to it. My husband loved the book. He thought it was really great. He's so fascinated with Kaz's character because Kaz Brecker is very intellectual, very smart, and so is my husband. My husband is the kind of guy that will spend his free time doing like brain games and like exercising his mind and I'm like, can we not? <laughs> He's so smart, so intellectual, and like loves figuring things out and that's who Kaz Brecker is. So I am curious to see how I like it. I hope I don't get too confused about things. Thankfully, since my husband read it first, I'll be able to just ask him. <laughs> but these covers, aren't they beautiful? So I have the collector's edition of these books right here. I'm so glad I got those because they're stunning and I love the story from the show, which I think is different from the books, but regardless, it's still exciting. So I ordered these covers because they were like a special artist design and the original covers had the stupid Netflix sticker on them. So I was very excited about this, but then I got these and I was looking at them on my shelf. The artist spelt the name wrong. Lay Barudgo. I was so mad. <laughs> I commented on the artist's Instagram post. I was like, hey, I don't know if you realize this or not, but the name is spelt wrong. And she was like, oh my gosh, because tons of these had already been sold. And apparently I was the only person to notice. So I messaged the like manufacturer of it, which is like this huge company in Italy. And they were like, we're so sorry. They refunded me and they pulled it off the shelves. So I feel like it kind of created a bad day for the artist, but at the same time, it was like, you know, people should know. <laughs> Anyways, it is a stunning cover. And of course the back says the classic six of crows quote, no mourners, no funerals. And I just think it is so beautiful and I'm very excited to get into the series. Again, I cannot give a synopsis because I really don't know a whole lot about the Six of Crows story alone. But I do know that there's like a lot of business aspects and crime and kind of like Peaky Blinders vibes a little bit. Kind of mafia-ish, but like steampunk and they're young. I think they're like in their teens. But anyway. Very much so looking forward to it and I cannot wait to give my thoughts because like I said, I think it's gonna be a brain exercise for me. <laughs> so the next book is technically the last book because I have two DNFs that I've already done that were on my fall TBR. So if you're just interested in what I'm going to read, you can check out if you want to after this next book. So the next book that I'm going to be reading if I have time to get to it, it's going to be Harry Potter. And again, thank you so much for all of your love on my last video where I talked about this because I kind of covered a little bit um, my thought on like fantasy and stuff like that as a Christian. And I've never read the Harry Potter books and I avoided them for 10 years because of religious stuff. And now that I'm kind of like allowing myself to create my own boundaries with fantasy and things like that. I am very excited to get into the Harry Potter series because that is something that I see solely as fictional and not something real as in like real witchcraft, you know? And of course, like I said in that last video, there are a lot of really respectable people that are a part of my faith that are reading it or are fans of it. Ali Ragsdale being one of them and Frank Turek being another one that talk about a lot of biblical allegories being in the book. So I'm very excited to read it for the first time. I'm so looking forward to it. I love the movies so much. As a kid, I watched them all the time and I always thought they were so inspiring and they were just so cozy and feel good and just like the family and the friendship and the camaraderie and the bravery, the courage, like it just was always so inspiring to me. So I'm very much so looking forward to reading the books for the very first time. And I think I'm just gonna read the first one this month or next month whenever I get to it. And if, depending on how I feel about it, maybe I'll read the rest of the series. Very exciting stuff. But yeah, that is technically the last book on my fall TBR. The next two books that I'm going to share were DNFs for me kind of going in line with what I was just talking about in regards to like having your own discernment and boundaries with stuff. So I'm just gonna quickly share those two and then I will close this out. After I sip my coffee that I haven't touched. Oh my gosh, that is so good. I put like a little pumpkin spice caramel in the cup and let my espresso drip on top of it. 
and it's fantastic. Okay, the first book that I DNF'd, and I was so sad about this because I was really excited about it, is The Unfortunate Side Effects of Heartbreak and Magic by Brianne Randall. This was a huge letdown. I DNF'd just after 50 pages, I think. So when it first started, I was like, uh, this is okay. Wasn't a fan of the writing. And everything was so superstitious. Like, I expected this to be kind of, like, magical fantasy-esque, you know? But it was, like, over the top. It was, like, this ingredient means that, or this sound means that, or this picture means that. Like, everything was so symbolic, like, over the top witchy symbolic. And I was like, okay, I get it. And then it started to do my least favorite thing in the world, and it started to include religion in it. So then they started to bring up, like, church and their church visits and... One of her friends who is not a witch had mentioned like, oh, well, what you do isn't that witchcraft, like something about the church and witchcraft. And I was like, okay, that's annoying. And I kind of kept going for a few more pages after that. And then tarot cards got brought up and I was like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> As I explained in my last video, I'm okay with like fantasy witchy stuff, like stuff that's not real that I don't believe that the Bible is referencing. But when it starts to bring up like real stuff and real practices, that's when I'm like, nope out of here kind of hoping that it would stay a little less realistic with some of the witchcraft stuff but it did not it digs into real stuff and it just was giving me the ick and i felt convicted about it and so i put it down that is just kind of like another example of what i mean by my own boundaries of stuff it was giving me the ick almost right away but i kept going just to see if maybe i was being a little too like jumping the gun on some of the stuff, but turns out I was not. My discernment was right, so I should have listened sooner, but lesson learned. So in case you're wondering if you have this book or if you want this book, just know that it does dig into more of the real craft as opposed to fantasy stuff. So this was a DNF for me at 50 pages, which is very sad. On the bright side, it has a bunch of recipes in here between the chapters. So at least I got the book for that. <laughs> so I think I'm going to at least save the recipes, but I'm probably gonna throw it. The last book that was also a DNF for me, which was a little disappointing because I was really looking forward to this one. This was on my TBR last year, but I ended up not getting to it. And that is The Poison Thread by Laura Purcell. And this year I was like, you know, I'm kind of in that gothic-y Victorian era vibe, you know, I was kind of feeling it. So I picked this up and literally, I picked it up, I didn't, I started to read the first page, the first sentence, and I was like, I feel like I should look this up quick. Like, I, it was so weird. It was so weird. And I just got like this weird feeling. So I looked it up and I was like, yeah, I'm not reading that. <laughs> there was quite a few trigger warnings that were pretty like disturbing, but the one that got me was somebody had mentioned that it made them physically sick during one of the birth scenes. I guess somebody has, a super traumatic childbirth and that is an automatic no for me like as somebody who doesn't have kids yet and I would really like to I don't want to put that negativity in my mind about birth so that was an automatic no for me <laughs> this book is about a young lady Ruth who is awaiting trial for murder and Dorothea is another character that comes in and she does charitable work at the prison and she is a phrenologist so she studies a person's skull that can cast light on their crimes. So it sounds very dark and mysterious. So it's a little bit darker than something that I'm usually interested in, but I was like, I don't know a whole lot about that concept. I didn't know if it was gonna be like supernatural or something. So I just wanted to give it a go just to see how I would feel about it. Cause it sounds interesting because it says when Dorothea meets Ruth, she is faced with another strange idea that it is possible to kill with just a needle and thread. Ruth tells a story of bitterness and betrayal of death and dresses, and it will shake Dorothea's belief in rationality and the power of redemption. Can Ruth be trusted? Is she mad or is she a murderer? And so I was like, okay, that sounds like super interesting, you know? So it's like, again, it is a little bit darker than something I would necessarily want to read, but I wasn't really going in this intending on like being super into it. I kind of just wanted to see what this kind of literature brings to the table, if that makes sense. But literally I didn't even get a sentence in and I just got like this heaviness in my heart and I was like, uh. so I feel like that was kind of like God being like, hey girl, maybe not. <laughs> So I'm really grateful that I listened to that discernment right away and looked it up before I got into this because it definitely also would have been a bummer if I had gotten into the story and I was really enjoying it 
and then got hit with something like that super traumatically halfway through. But anyway, so that is also just another example of something that I will avoid. I love dark literature in the sense of like emotional things, kind of like Edgar Allan Poe or even like King David in the Bible, you know, that man, he had some emotional problems, you know, and it's relatable. So I like like that kind of stuff, but I wasn't sure how that one would go. So either way, I'm glad that I put it down. <laughs> but overall, that is my fall TBR, you guys. I'm so excited about it. I can't wait to dig in to more fun, like comedy romance vibes. So very much so looking forward to it. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you've watched to the end, leave a little mushroom emoji because look at how cute. So anyway, again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.